Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Blackmagic Design released DaVinci Resolve for iPad OS back on December 21st, which means it's been about 10 days since it came out. Since that time, I have been using it, I have been editing videos, I have been trying different things to see how it functions and performs in the real world, and I want to let you guys know what my verdict is and what my opinion is and if it is actually worth looking into. The first thing to talk about is on the default version of DaVinci Resolve, you have two pages, which on the desktop version, you have a number of pages. On the iPad, all you have is the cut page and the color page, and that is it. Now, if you've been watching lots of reviews and whatnot about DaVinci Resolve for iPad, you've probably already seen this, but there is a hack, if you wanna call it a hack, that allows you to get all the pages of DaVinci Resolve that you would normally see on the computer version of DaVinci Resolve. Since that is such an important part of this review, I'm gonna show you guys very quickly how to do that because it's very, very easy. Now the credit for finding this definitely does not go to me. The first person I saw it from was from Michael Tobin, who eventually got it from Daniel Kovacs. I'm going to link both of their videos down below because they are the ones that I originally got this information from. Going over here to the iPad, we hit our app and we go into DaVinci Resolve. You are gonna need a keyboard for this. And once you're on the screen here, you're gonna use your keyboard and do Option Command K. This brings up the keyboard customization menu. Over here on the side, we're gonna scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see a little section that says Show Page, hit that. And what you want is to assign a shortcut to the pages that you want. So normally the Edit tab, which is the tab that I like, is blank, so it looks like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select the Edit tab, and I'm gonna hit Shift-1, because that's the particular keyboard shortcut that I like to use, and then I'm gonna save it. Then I'm gonna close that out, and then I'm gonna hit Shift-1, and as you see, my page now displays for the Edit page. So that is how you add in those additional pages and how that hack works. Now we're gonna talk about how that performs, and if it's buggy, and if it glitches out, in just a second. But first off, let's go to the default version of iPad. So in the default, again, you get the color tab and you get the cut tab. The cut tab, in my opinion, is not very smooth. I don't personally like it. I find that it is difficult to use. I find it particularly difficult to sync media. So if you have a multi-cam setup where you're getting audio on different camera angles and you want to sync all that audio and whatnot, I find that very, very difficult to use. It's a lot more of a struggle than in my opinion it should be. I went through a bunch of the documentation for DaVinci Resolve and I tried to do it the way they told me, but it's still just, it wasn't in my opinion very smooth. With the hacked version where you add in the edit page or whatever pages you want, but in my particular case, and I think for most people, they're gonna be adding in the edit page because that's what most people I know prefer. But with the hacked version of the edit page, it is identical to the computer version. Everything is the same, all the options are the same, the way you would do it on the desktop is the same, which is absolutely perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. And it does function extremely well. It works very, very well. You are able to edit just like you normally would on the desktop version. That being said, because it is not the official released version from Blackmagic, it is like the hacked version to get the page on your iPad, it is quite buggy. Now by buggy, I mean that it glitches out and closes down the app every so often. But when you first hear that, you think, oh no, that's not a good thing because I could be working for hours on my video and it closes it out, doesn't save anything, I lose all my work. That's a big, big, big problem. However, it's not that bad. In terms of frequency, how often it glitches out, there's no exact answer I can give you because sometimes I will work for five hours straight and it won't close out once. Other times, I'll open it up, make one edit, it'll close it out. I'll open it up again, make one edit, it'll close it out. But every single time, what I found is that it has always saved my work except for the very last edit I made. So if I made it cut, and then it made it glitch out and close out, when I open it back up, that cut won't be there, but everything else will be. I've been using this for several hours, and it has never deleted lots of unsaved work. It seems to save after every single change, and if the app does glitch out and close, it is because of that change you made or that button you clicked and it just won't save that very last change. So it isn't actually a problem, it's more like just inconvenient. The other thing it will do is if you export from the edit tab, I found that every once in a while, not very often, but every once in a while, in the final exported version of the video, something might be a little bit off. Like for some reason, it might cut out some music, even though your music is showing that it's on and it's up and the volume is there, for some reason when you export it, all of a sudden the music is just gone. And I've had that happen twice, which isn't a big problem, 
But each time after I've watched it, just to make sure that everything is there, I just go back in and I re-export the video. That's the other thing. Again, that doesn't happen very often, but it has happened a couple times to me. Something to keep in mind if you are using the hacked version of the DaVinci Resolve app, by, for example, by adding in the edit page, when the app does close out and crash, a lot of times when you go back into the app, the edit page or whatever page you added will no longer be there. And number one, you'll either have to just use your, sheet, your keyboard shortcut to add it again, so in my case, Shift-1, and there it is, and then I just click on it and continue editing. Or sometimes, every once in a while I have found that it actually makes you go back into the keyboard customization menu, so the option command K, and re-add your keyboard shortcut, Shift-1, and then you can go in and add in the edit page. Every once in a while I've found that happen, but when the app does close, you will have to do at least one of those to get the page back. But aside from those tiny little bugs which are easy to work around, the hacked version of getting the edit tab on the iPadOS functions extremely, extremely well, and I will take it and deal with those little bugs and whatnot any day over using the cut tab. That makes me sound like if the edit tab were not on DaVinci Resolve, I wouldn't use this on iPad, and that is actually not the case, because if I could not get the edit tab on DaVinci Resolve, if it completely disappeared, I would still use the cut tab. It's not that big a problem, it's just much more inconvenient than the edit tab. But I will take it any day over having to be forced to be at my home to edit a video. Let's talk about the performance of DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Now in my case, I'm using the iPad Pro M2 model with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And what I have found is that this is a video editing monster. I could not be happier with this thing. So the biggest thing for me is when I've used DaVinci Resolve in the past, whether it be on Windows computers or on my iMac, which is an older iMac, by the way, so that would explain that. But whenever I do use DaVinci Resolve, I cannot watch the video smoothly at all as I'm sitting there editing. It is very choppy. A lot of times you'll hear the audio, but the video won't really match up. Chances are you know what I'm talking about if you have used DaVinci Resolve. On the iPad, that is absolutely not the case. You can watch this smoothly and easily and perfectly, and it is the perfect editing experience. To export video, it typically takes, in my case, I had about 20 minutes of 4K video with numerous edits as well as audio and music, and I had multiple camera angles. And to export that, it typically took me about 15 to 20 minutes, which is which is super good. Now, because it is the iPad, obviously it is completely silent, which is nice. When you open that app up, it loads instantly. It takes about two seconds from when you hit the app to the home screen being displayed. As we just talked about, the hacked version of the app, such as adding in the edit pages or whatnot, does glitch out and crash on you relatively constantly, so you will have to expect that. However, if you're just using the official releases, just the color page and the cut page, that I have never had glitch out and crash on me ever at all. Does it make the iPad overheat? It does not make it overheat. When I first started using DaVinci Resolve, the brightness would suddenly decrease and then like an hour or two later, it would decrease ever so slightly again. And it's barely noticeable, but you look at it and you're like, oh, that's just so slightly decreased. But it was odd. It only did that for me, I think the first day. And since then, I have done a lot more difficult edits and a lot more power intensive edits. And it has never done that again. So I don't know if that was just something for the first initial use. I don't, I don't know what happened there, but it's never lowered the brightness on me again. Every once in a while to help with it not getting hot, especially when you're exporting video, it will stop accepting charge from the charger until the internal temperature gets a little bit lower and then it will resume the charging. On that same note, how does it work on battery power versus charging? This app does drain the battery quite quickly, so I definitely recommend using this with the charger. What about the tools that you can use with this app. So you can basically use it with anything. You can completely use it with your finger just fine. You can use it with the Apple Pencil just fine and it works well. You can use it with the mouse and keyboard and it works extremely well. You can use it with the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor and it works super duper well. In my opinion, I use it with the keyboard and mouse and that is a perfectly flawless, great functioning experience. And the biggest part of having this app on the iPad is that you can take this anywhere. You can literally edit a 4K numerous clip video on the plane, sitting in a gas station, I don't know why you'd be doing that, in the library, anything. You can edit your videos anywhere and very easily because all you need is your iPad and it is as light as a magazine and it functions extremely well. So if you haven't already noticed by now, my verdict on this app is that it is absolutely an incredible app. 
I feel like one of the complaints with the iPad is that you've always had this massively powerful device that isn't taking advantage of software that can actually use it. I think that using DaVinci Resolve with the iPad is leaning in that direction now because you are taking a very power intensive task editing 4K video or editing whatever video you want to edit and you're using the iPad for that now and that is a tremendously good use case for the iPad because it is so powerful and it is completely capable of it. The iPad for me has been an absolute lifesaver because normally I would have to edit always from home. I could not use my laptop, it wasn't powerful enough, I could not use other computers, they were not powerful enough. I had to edit at home which was a massive waste of time whereas now with the iPad I can take this skinny little magazine sized machine and I can make tremendously powerful edits and actually be productive and get work done rather than being restrained by being at home to edit videos, which is huge for me. This is an absolute lifesaver. I absolutely love this app. It functions well. It performs extremely well. There is the hacked version of the edit page that we are using at this point, which for me, even though it crashes, it is 100% worth it and I will work through the times that it crashes because it is so much easier than having to do it at home or whatnot. My hope is that Blackmagic Design will eventually release official versions of all those pages, and then we won't have the issues with crashing, and then it will be even more incredible. If you guys are a video editor, I would definitely recommend checking it out because I fully support it, and I don't think you guys will be dissatisfied with it. And that is my review of DaVinci Resolve for the iPad OS. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. I do have some interesting com content coming out. I recently started building my very own PC. The first video came out a couple of videos ago, and then the second, third, and fourth video of that series are each gonna be coming out in the Tuesdays, each one after the other from here. If you're interested in seeing that, stay tuned because it will be coming out shortly. Otherwise, guys, thank you again for watching. I appreciate your time, and you guys have an amazing rest of your day.